What we're going to show you here today is the Kimberley Caravan and its eco-friendly features. But before we start off with the fuel cell in the front here, just let's look at a couple of fundamentals of the caravan. It's low profile to the ground, which has the advantage of less wind resistance. It's narrow, the same width as the four-wheel drive, also less wind resistance, and it's light. This unit weighs less than two tonne loaded up. On top of the caravan, you'll see some solar panels. Those solar panels are on all the time, charging when the van's stationary, travelling in camp, and that's charging directly into the batteries that we have on board. Let's have a look at a close-up in the front of this Kimberley caravan and see what goodies we've got tucked in the front multi-box here. Uh, I've got my hand here on the fuel cell. This is the actual fuel cartridge. I'm going to lift it up. It's actually methanol. It's 10 litres. Uh, the fuel cell converts that methanol to hydrogen and runs it in the fuel cell. Over here we've got a vacuum toilet, so there's no chemicals in the toilet in this van, it's totally eco-safe. We've got on the front here an electronic disc that actually pumps up the hydraulic pressure uh, for the disc brakes that are on this unit. In the fuel cell that we've got here, it's run purely off this methanol. Uh, there's a simple connector that goes into the top of the cartridge here, and it's simply a matter of turning it on. And once that's turned on, it is now running totally automatically. It will sense the batteries, see what the charge level is in it, and adjust the amount of current going into the batteries, uh, whatever is required. With the solar panels running at the moment, there's probably no need for any uh, charge current from the fuel cell. If you went away for a few days, overcast skies, not as much solar, uh, then the fuel cell could run. Now there are over 14,000 of these units in Europe and less than 20 or 30 in Australia in general use, although the Australian military, I believe, have quite a few. What we've done at Kimberley to make this uh, better in the tropics is we've added this extraction vent and in here added a, a second fan in addition to the fan that's in the unit. What this extraction vent does is it takes the air through the fuel cell and exhausts it out to the back, getting fresh air in through the filter on the driver's side of the front uh, multi-box. So let's just step through this. We've got the fuel cartridge here. Uh, we estimate that for a trip for three months, you'd probably go through uh, three or maybe four of these cartridges. That's less uh, fuel than what you'd go through in a generator in the, in the, uh, where you carry the generators in the front. Uh, we've got the fuel cell here. We've got the extraction fan here. Uh, the unit weighs less than seven kilos, very, very light, um, and uh, basically silent. It gives out um, a small amount of water uh, that comes out of the drain pipe at the bottom that just sits in the bottom of the train here. Tiny, tiny little bit of water um, is, the, is the output. Corner over here, we have a four stage uh, solar uh, controller for, for coming down from the roof. The fourth stage of that controller uh, desulfates the batteries. Now while you've been looking at all of this, the batteries are behind here in the box behind. There's a simple cover that lifts off these items lift out of the way, cover there, and we have absorbed glass mat batteries there behind. With this setup, the customer can stay, as we said before, we think comfortably for 90 to 120 days with the cartridges that they carry on board. 